Howdy folks and to all the wonderful subscribers. It's me again, your cheap Edu Lansi. Water is one of the most precious commodities on earth and just as much as we use it in lands, this goes the same when we are on board ships. But have you wondered where do ships get water, especially fresh water? Generally, fresh water is stored in fresh water tanks and distilled tanks on board ships. Basically, fresh water are generated on board whilst if the vessel is alongside and in port for longer duration on periods such as in dry docks or for ships like uh, barkers which stays longer in ports, then port services will be obtained. However, when the ship sets sails and with long voyages, this fresh water stored in the tanks are not enough and must be replenished. And this is where our fresh water generators gets into the picture. So, how do ships obtain and generate their fresh water from? Well, the answer is very obvious. It's the very water they are sailing on. Salt water in the high seas. Yes, you heard me right. So, let's go down to details and let's see how it works. There are two most popular types of freshwater generation methods. Number one, the reverse osmosis type. And number two, the salination or freshwater generators. Majority of which are used on board merchant vessels is the desalination freshwater generator type. In this respect, we shall tackle the latter as mentioned. To begin with, the general principles used in this type is by vaporizing the salt water, then recondensing it back to liquid. But what is the point of vaporizing and recondensing it back to liquid? Well, you see, when a liquid like water is vaporized, its main constituents like hydrogen and oxygen remains the same, yet since the density of salt or NaCl or sodium chloride when vaporized is heavier than H2O, thus it will be separated from the water vapor which density is lighter. Thus, the salt water will turn into a fresh water. Of course, a little bit, if none, will be carried over. So in this process, the main engine fresh water jacket cooling system is used to boil up the salt water. The jacket cooling water temperature, which was drawn from the main engine, as medium for cooling is about approximately 80 degrees Celsius, more or less. This is the medium that is being used for heating in fresh water generators. But wait, if the temperature is approximately 80 degrees Celsius, how come the seawater boils off and yields vapor? Let's establish some facts. Water boils at 100 degrees Celsius at atmospheric pressure. It's about 1.023 bar or 1013 millibars or 14.7 psi ounce per square inch. To give you an example, if you boil water at home with an open lid pot and you are at sea level, then the water requires 100 degrees Celsius boiling point temperature before it gives off by 4. Let's explain further. With the law of thermodynamics and physics, boiling point of any substance is directly proportional to pressures as per physical properties. Meaning, if the pressure is high, whether the substance is in open or closed container, then the boiling point temperature goes up. Whilst, if the pressure is lower than the atmospheric pressure, then the boiling point temperature goes down. Confused? Okay. If I'm on top of Mount Everest, where the atmospheric pressure is lower than at sea level, the altitude is about 33,000 feet, then water boils about 72 degrees Celsius when it is subjected to heat. The same thing when I go uphill to Bug City, Philippines. At 4,000 feet above sea level, the water boils at 95 degrees Celsius, again when subjected to heat. This is the same when you are cooking with a pressure cooker at home. The meat is softened because the temperature inside the cooker is higher than 100 degrees Celsius. With these principles, we have to bring down the pressure so that we could use a jacket cooling water temperature, which is about 80 degrees Celsius. At this point, the seawater boils at about 50 degrees Celsius or even lower hence it gives off vapor so then we can now condense it to become fresh water familiar as you with a model type generator this is a particular uh, fresh water generator it's uh, made by warchilla disclaimer i am not affiliated with warchilla corporation uh, this is a model type that they have so uh, this is a shell type uh, fresh water generator and um, We'll show you 
each and one of those com main components. Let's get deeper and uh, look the inside part of it. First, we take out the covers or plate covers, the forward part and at the back. So, as you are looking at now the uh, model, which we just removed the uh, cover, the back and the front, and we could rotate it. Inside, actually, on the upper part of the chamber, which is uh, the so called condenser, while at the uh, lower part section of the shell is the so-called evaporator now this uh, plate cover is just uh, purposely being uh, cut out so that you could see the inside of the heat exchangers at the side is the control panel where it's very obvious you could see it in there and of course we have some equipments or other main components Right, so now we are here in the engine room area. Uh, basically, we are just exactly in the location where in the press water generator is fitted. As you can see, we have here the control box and we have the shell, back and front cover. You could see also here, see, you could also see here the adapter and of course, the water pump which is of centrifugal type this is the inlet of the seawater coming from the seawater system and it goes inside through the condenser exchange tubes comes out through here and it bleeds out a little bit of proportion of seawater in the lower part of the chamber or the shell in that area is where the evaporator is located. Hence, in here is the inlet of the heat, which is jacket cooling water system, coming from the main engine room, which is about 80 degrees Celsius, and comes out of this area and goes back again through the system. Now, as you can see, this also has a heat exchanger tube inside. So, there is no physical contact, but thermal contact. So what happens now is that the seawater inside that has, that has been bleed out proportionally by this pipe will be evaporated from within. Now, this yellow line, if we can represent it, is actually connected to the adductor. Hence, that adductor will, of course, in effect, will apply the so-called Venturi effect wherein it sucks air and liquid and creates vacuum within the chamber and thereby if there is a negative pressure or vacuum cause the boiling point of water will be lower hence just at about 50 degrees celsius the water boils and turns into a vapor or mist it passes through inside in between the shell wherein we call it as a demister that demister will further filter the vapor or mist where it turns course takes out the salt water that can be carried within and with that it goes as a mist through the upper chamber and we have the condenser which is cooler or temperature thereby the vapor or mist will be condensed hence after that it turns into liquid and it will be sucked out or drawn by the water pump and from the water pump it uh, of course discharges and then goes to your so-called distilled tanks wherein i'll be showing you go here and inside if you can control it remotely All right hold on a minute just go in this there you go there's the fresh water console generator so I'm gonna enlarge it and let's simulate it through this console panel. Right, so this is the schematic diagram and of course we could simulate it from here. And as you can see, uh, the system is running right now. This is the inlet for the uh, seawater wherein uh, you'll find here the temperature about 26.7 degrees Celsius to be exact. And of course it goes out. Now uh, this has a separate uh, inlet for the seawater that goes into the evaporator 
while it's a separate system for the condenser. Uh, that is uh, depends on the uh, maker of the press water generator. You can find here also the uh, vacuum or uh, adductor uh, pumps. So now you can further understand here that this is the heating or the one that is coming from the fresh water jacket cooling system of the main engine. So it's about 71 degrees Celsius. It's quite hot and it goes through inside the evaporator and comes out again. Now since there is a water that goes through here through from the sea water and of course it evaporates. Now this water of course since uh, the seawater is running through and out through the adductor the adductor of course with the venturi effect creates vacuum or negative pressure now you have a negative pressure actually within the shell or inside of the chamber basically as i mentioned in the earlier part of this discussion that boiling point temperature of a certain liquid will go down directly proportional or go up directly proportional with the pressure so Hence, with this uh, condition, the pressure is negative, then the boiling point of water is also very low. And at this point, by just 71 degrees al alone, actually, from 50 degrees Celsius or even lower, it starts to boil up. And this turns to vapor or mist. The mist, of course, passes through the demister. The demister acts as a filter, of course, to filter out the other um, substance that may be carried uh, within the process like your uh, sodium chloride so it further minimizes to a certain degree where it's very uh, negligible so hence this mist is basically separated with uh, salt or sodium chloride and now you have the condenser it touches the condenser and of course as the word implies condenses it turns into liquid now you have pressed water so you can see the blue uh, color there it is being sucked out or drawn out by the water pump and goes out through and goes to your other system goes to your distilled press water tank so if we can just follow here now you will be able to see this is the distilled press water tank and the distilled press water tank could uh, serve many other uh, system like of course your feed water tank your expansion tank for your cooling system your uh, um, supply for the uh, boiler uh, which is uh, of course uh, it bo you utilize the boiler uh, with the fresh water so if we follow here uh, also if it's used uh, domestically like uh, washing cleaning and even drinking it goes through the fresh water hydro 4 system through the hydro 4 system it passes through a portabilizer and now you can of course send it to your drinking water tank for consumption and of course the rest of the system will all go will also be utilized for your so-called hot water tank so there are many uh, services that this system can do it can of course send it to the main engine to your expansion tank and from there press water is utilized to cool down the main engine for the main reason that sea water is corrosive so the main engine is being cooled down by press water jacket cooling system which is a closed loop system of course uh, some of them of course will also go to your other uh, uh, system of cooling and system and heating so yeah, that is the so-called uh, use of the so-called press water generator. And there you go. I hope you did understand and follow this instruction. And just uh, keep posted. Ciao.